Hi, I'm Seamless, and I forgot to engage layered windows. All right. That function lets you look at menus and stuff, like drop-down menus when I, when I drop them down. Anywho, today is Friday, which means it's time for a new how to base. And today is going to be interesting because it's about a base I made at the track I'm working on, which uh, feels good to say that again. But um, anyway, I have uh, this track. This is actually the second drop. It's near. It's the end. And um, I'm going to play the A and the B drop, even though the base we're going to look at is actually not even in the B drop. I just want to show it off because I like it. Now, uh, the base we're going to look at is this guy here. These are um, of the same type. And you'll know, you'll know when you hear this one, it's pretty obvious which one it'll be afterwards. And I'm not going to lie. It's probably the least interesting base in this entire section. And the reason why I'm talking about it is because it's the kind of thing that I haven't talked about before. And I have talked about everything else in here. And um, so I'll, I'll play it. And then when I'm done explaining how this one base works, I'll briefly go over uh, how all the other bases works and like which other um, old how to bases I've done covered it because I have covered, I think, all of them. Okay, so I'm going to start playing it. Can we kind of loud? Just so you know. Playing in three, two, one. All clicks and pops and stuff were from the east west uh, stuff because when you play it live, it tends to make sounds like that. It, hopefully, usually they don't show up in rendering, but sometimes they do. We have to, to deal with that. Anyway, point being, today's bass is this guy. Yeah, one second. Uh, okay, so my voice is not very loud. This was, this was happening. Do, 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 That's a little better, I guess. Yeah. Probably need to turn down out the whole video, but that's still better than not being able to hear me talk and then being deafened when to do this. And such. So, now this is a kind of a lasery thing, but what's cool about it is its um, primary purpose, the, the do, 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 like the kind of rhythmic aspect of it, um, is is the result of the harmonic detune function, which you hear, you hear me talk about a lot. So this is the path that's making the sound. And what we're doing, what's making the primary pitch movement um, is the, as I've automated the detune over here, right click, you can see I have it linked to a controller. And you see it's doing all kinds of wacky stuff. So I'm gonna make a new one and I will show you what that means from there. Patches, okay. Project is kind of big, so loading new stuff takes a bit. So, uh, as I mentioned before in previous how to bases, what the detune function does is that it moves the harmonics away from the fundamental. Like so. Certain settings will be uh, tonally relevant to the original sound. However, sometimes You can get kind of weird detune kind of sounds because really it is like like you know 99.9% .9 of the harmonic content is being pitched up and down but it's just a fundamental staying where it is and uh, so you know I, I, on the other patch I did all the usual things you know I made I made some unison uh, 
I did I did that thing where I automate the, the unison to shut off really fast. So that um, we get a little bit of unison movement, but then the sound remains stable as opposed to having constant movement. Like so. Actually stays stable. And then when I make changes in the uh, unison pitch window, it can be kind of interesting. And then it's distorted as well. And then when the uh, the harmonic detune is messed with at, in this stage, you can kind of hear that um, it's the interplay between the new the, the harmonic movement and the constant fundamental creates a very interesting sound. Um, the 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 sound that I end up make, I end up making uh, it's a bit more complex just because I've automated other things like I, I added in, um, prism kinds of uh, the prism setting kind of kind of deal. But that's not important though. Like that, what's really causing what's really causing the sound to be the sound that it is is the detune uh, automation. Now, what um, I originally made the sound to do was actually to be a standard kind of laser sound, and like uh, normal normal laser sounds are usually the result of pitch automation. Would I mean this kind of still is just harmonic selecting, it's being just um, the harmonics and not the actual pitch itself. And so normally you would get something like this. You know that that's normally the kind of lasery thing that we're doing, but we're kind of well, we're still sort of doing that, but instead of uh, main pitch, we're doing harmonic harmonic pitches. The fundamental staying the same, so it, it's it's a it's uh, it's fundamentally similar to normal um, uh, kind of lasery things. But then we also get something like interesting stuff because this this one this big one here. Um, not only am I automating the detune, but I'm also sliding. I'm also sliding. I, I'm engaging pitch slides. And so that means that the fundamental is moving up and down. It's moving up in pitch in a certain rate, but the detune is moving all over the place. So that means that not only are we have the interplay between different pitches of the harmonics and the fundamental, we're also having different movement, like rates, different movement rates. So that creates an interesting sort of texture. <laughs> Uh, this is a chorus I have on post that I only use right here. And I turn it on, came up a little bit, turn it on, came up a little bit, turn, turn it off, and it stayed off for the rest of the song. It's only there for that one moment. Now, um, normally when I make a laser sound, I don't have a bass involved. I don't have, like, I, like, this, is, this has the fundamental tone involved, engaged in it, but um, I don't usually do that. I usually either don't have a bass underneath a laser kind of sound, or I'll, you know, sub reinforce it with something. If I, if I have an FM patch, I'll usually use that because if the FM amount is at zero, the sound is just a sine wave. So it's sine sub, you know, it's usable for that sort of thing. So again, the whole point of this sound is that we're getting the laser kind of automate like movement as a result of moving the detune of the harmonics. Now, um, while I'm moving around, you saw that I also kind of stayed at some locations. Uh, maximum level here is 16, so it's, that's uh, the ra a ratio of 16. But sometimes I, I stay at like lower values, and um, the movement creates an interesting sound. But if you stay at a level, I mean, this this is a very imprecise setting. You know, I'm not, I don't know, like this is if it's half right here, so like that's eight. Actually, is it, is it eight? Because sometimes the uh, eight four seven point point four eight and a half. Because sometimes the um, actual putting it at fifty percent is not really fifty percent. Uh, point point I'm making is that um, you can get interesting stable tones by setting the detune uh, someplace interesting. Come on, yeah. <laughs> It's a bit abrasive, but uh, it can be fun. And of course, some of my earlier uh, detune videos I, I did for how to bass were actually using small amounts of detune change to create uh, a kind of Reese phase warble, you know, which again is 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 still similar to the traditional uh, way of, of reaching that. It's just that we're adding a bit of a added a um, newness to it because that's what it is. Yeah, so I rambled about that enough because this, I think, makes sense. If you have any questions about this, let me know. I believe, I mean, it's pretty
pretty straightforward stuff. But let's talk about the other bases because I'm sure you want to know. Um, in one of the recent how to bases, uh, the one about layering, um, I actually decided to make a layer patch. That's not it. Where's the layer patch? This guy's layer patch. So this is four harmers. Um, and then I have the uh, cutoff automated on all of them. What's going on with that guy? Uh, the, the first hit here, this is just one guy. This is, a, this is one of my phase word patches. This was um, based on the phaser rhythmic stuff. Uh, this was again, this is how to base 51, I think. I think that might have been it. Uh, key point of this one is that I engage the fa the masking on the phaser. And what this does is it, um, I've selected so that it only, it only engages in certain locations, as you see here. And that's what creates that sort of high, high frequency presence when it moves around, because it's still, it's blurred off on the top, that's because it, it is, is slowly disengaging as it reaches the maximum uh, frequency value. And then it comes back on and then it keeps it in the mid. So that's what that kind of like, uh, midi mid sort of square tone comes from is it was from that uh area being untouched by the phasers uh wrath so that's what that guy was and i have a, these chords over it when that bass recovered and what's this guy this one's interesting this is actually um a resampling of a massive patch but the massive patch was uh something that bt told me about about um, uh, either Austin or Brady's bass production, uh, off AU5 or Fractal's bass production. So I'm not going to talk about that one because it's not mine to talk about. This is just a, a vocoder, and the way this one works is it's a uh, it's a I have it's some Harmer patch. That's not the Harmer patch. This one is I think. It's it's funny. It's um it's the same phase verb bass as the uh, as the the one in the beginning. Slightly modified to accentuate certain uh, frequency characteristics to then vocode, but then I vocoded it with a FM patch, and I have a couple of how to bases specifically about this particular um, method. Um, how to base twenty seven was my how to base where I talked about just about how Vocodex worked as a, as a plugin. Like I focused on that. And uh, with that, you should be able to um, work out how to ha make this sort of carrier modulator relationship where the carrier is a uh, harmer, which is this, this one with the, 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 it's a harmer with of the kind that we learned in uh, how to base 51. And it's an FM patch of the kind that we learned in how to base six and how to base 50. How to base six covered how to do it with citrus and how to base 50 covered how to do it with FM8. What else we got? That's our base. So this is the um this is actually the the same phase verb patch. I call I call them phase words. Phase verb patch from the beginning. It's just that um I have I have this uh uh keyboard offset. The the phase verb position is with is key offset offset. And uh what this means is that when you move when you do slide notes, the phase verb position will move uh, with the pitch value. And since the phasers are actually still moving, like it's moving through its its speed like this, um, coming up or down will, in, will increase its apparent speed as a result of it being uh, key key synced. So uh, going down, going down, I think slows it down because I have it inversed. If you go down far enough, you get this ridiculous kind of splutchy thing, which doesn't really sound good. Uh, as like a solid tone, but when it's a part of something just for, for a second, it uh, sort of sounds good, in my opinion. That was two of the same kind. Uh, this was a resampled um, 
This is a sample of a bandpass bass, which I don't know if I've talked about yet. I have been planning on talking about it. Um, it I, I call it the bandpass bass. It's a harmer. It's a harmer patch that um, utilizes the, uh, the particular filter characteristics that it it, it shows. Which I think I, I did talk about the filters in particular. Um, I uh, I either called it custom custom filters or uh, vowel morphing filters in one of the previous how to bases. I think it was in the forties. Um, uh, however, I might not have talked about this bass yet. The the one that originally created it. This was a resampled bass. Resampling I covered in how to base um, nine was I think the most straightforward and best result one that I covered. I don't think I've covered resampling in quite a while, but um, this one was uh, of that. <laughs> And that's the phase verb again. This guy. This one was the product of a failed project that I started. I uh, it was it was originally going to be a drum and bass project, and I was trying to uh, mimic a certain sound, and it, uh, it didn't work out so well. And so I deleted the project, which means I also deleted whatever made this patch. I found it in my uh, sliced beats folder. As you see, it's drag sample 615. I found it. I thought, wow, that sounds good. I'm going to use it. But I have no idea how I made it. I mean, I have an, I have an idea. I'm pretty sure it involves resampling of some kind. Beyond that, I don't know. That's that. Uh, resampled massive patch. This is the phase verb again. Bandpass bass. That's the FM bass. FM vocoder bass. That's the bandpass bass. Again, you see I'm you notice how I'm using the same sample, but I'm cutting it up a whole bunch of times. I never actually use the whole sample all at once. This is an arrangement cue that you should take for how to deal with resampled sounds. Because um when I when you do, when you do straight resample something, like if you took like a whole bass phrase and you resample it all at once, the effect might be it's not very good sounding. It's like you get, you get, it just sounds like a, a chorus effect. You get like a, you hear the movement and you hear it go all the way through the phrase, the phrase and it just ignores, you know, any kind of uh, groove or rhythm in the track. And so when, when you hear it all in context like that, it doesn't really work out very well. But if you just, if you just chop up bits and literally run around in places, uh, it will sound disassociated with whatever sound you put before it. And, the, and as a result, um, Will be will be more interesting to hear for, for that one moment because then you don't you don't know what the effect is if you hear you can't your 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 mind can't latch on to what it's supposed to be and so it it becomes more alien and cool to listen to kind of thing so that's why I never um, have just like a resampled bass phrase that just plays all at once I usually have a I'll, I'll make like a wild kind of like single um, loop of something I actually looped it twice for this one not really sure why and um, it won't be related to whatever I'm doing, but it'll be like in the same key. It'll have some like phrase movements or whatever. And then I'll cut that up and put it around as fills and stuff like I did here. And and that worked out nice. So this guy is actually this dude. Yeah. So this is more layering fun. Um, this is, again, these are bases that were create, created using the uh, phaser as the rhythmic tool, a la How to Base 51. You can see that they're all named Phase Word 14. That's because I opened up uh, the preset that was Phase Word 14, which none of these sound like anymore. And I made very small differences in the unison and phase amount. I just, I just made differences. I made small differences. And I put them all together because... Um, the way that this works with the phase, the phase word modification, as I covered how to base 51, or I'm pretty sure it's 51, 50, 51. The, the reason, the reason why this works is because I, uh, I do that thing where I, uh, automate the, um, unison to shut off really fast. So you get that smooth amount. And then whenever the, um, phaser makes the, uh, the rhythmic sound, it's a consistent sound. As a result though, the phase setting and the pitch setting have just drastic uh, influence over the quality of the sound, over the, over the, the the character itself. So that's why these guys have very different 
very different um, effects associated with them, despite being from the same sound. Uh, and so you layer them, layer them together, and you get some kind of cool sort of effect. I don't use it too often, though. Where's the other one? This one I just started four times instead of letting the phaser do the rhythm, rhythmic work. The rhythm work. So that's pretty much it for the bases in this in the song. They're mostly derived from the same thing. It's just that they were used very differently to create, you know, a wider variety of sound in the in the palette. And of course, the original point of the sound bass was this sound, which is cool. Uh, yeah. If you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.